Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's Daily Devotional. I apologize if my voice sounds a little uh, echoey. Uh, I'm actually uh, streaming from our new place in Iowa Park, and there's practically nothing in this room right now, so <laughs> there's nothing to break my voice up from echoing off the walls and the floor. Uh, so I apologize if it sounds a little, uh, a little empty, because it is. So our daily devotional today is coming from Hebrews chapter 2 and the first four verses. Uh, well, actually the first, yeah, first four verses. Uh, and it's not going to, again, this is not going to be a very long one. Just something to think about as the daily devotional is intended to be uh, for us to just kind of uh, have something to uh, uh, kind of be reminded of during our, our day and you know, over the course of our week. Something to think about and something for us to uh, get opportunity for us to remind ourselves of what we're doing as Christians. So in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, the Hebrew writer says, Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. So as the Hebrew writer, this is on the heels of chapter one, where the Hebrew writer talks about that in you know, previous times, uh, God spoke through prophets. Now he speaks through his son. Uh, and that being the case, he talks, he compares the angels and how that none of the angels uh, can are, are of any sort to be compared to uh, Jesus. Jesus is the son of God. Uh, and so that being the case, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Just as a side note, obviously, in order to drift away from somewhere, you have to be in that somewhere to start with. <laughs> if I'm drifting away from uh, the spot that I'm in, it's because I'm in the spot and I'm drifting off of it. Uh, and so obviously the, uh, the importance of, of acknowledging the fact that this is referring to falling away from the Lord, uh, losing our salvation, if you will. Go away, fly. Uh, so that being the case, as the Hebrew writer goes on to describe the fact that uh, just as this word spoken through angels, of course, the, the, a lot of the prophecies and promises that were given to man through the the messengers or angels of god on several occasions every transgression and disobedience received a just reward so if this is how it worked before how much more so now that he speaks through his son which is what his point was at the beginning of chapter one how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him so this is the importance of placing, notice, the paying attention to the word of God. The, the word that first began to be spoken by the Lord, this salvation, this, this word that has been given to us, not just through angels, but through the son of God himself. And then in verse four, the Hebrew writer says, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. God proved everything that Jesus claimed to be. In fact, even Jesus said, if you don't believe me, fine, believe the works. If the works that I do say I'm from God, then why wouldn't you believe I'm from God or sent from, from God? And so he continues to describe this comparison of Jesus to the angels to show how much greater Jesus is than the angels. And then in verse 9, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. And so he describes the fact that Jesus, none of the angels ever became flesh. None of the angels ever uh, died for, for us. They weren't our sacrifice. Jesus 
was. And of course, that's the plan of God. An angel couldn't do it. It had to be the Son of God, and it had to be someone who lived as a man, came to earth and lived as a man, and was perfect. And as such, he gives that uh, opportunity for us to be saved. Indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. That is, those who are his seed through faith. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. And of course, the idea of propitiation uh, carries the idea of, of, being, of something being substituted for another, whereas it should have been our blood being offered on behalf of our own sins, death for sin, Jesus offered himself once for all, and he is able to make propitiation for the sins of the people because he goes into the most holy with his own blood. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Of course, as high priest, he also lives to make intercession for us, which is a point he brought or will make later on. But the point that, ooh, the point that uh, Jesus himself, he suffered, he was tempted in all points as we are, which is again a point that uh, is made later. He is able to aid those who are tempted because he knows, he knows what that's like. He was, he was uh, exposed to temptation, and yet Jesus uh, was faithful through all of it. So I got to thinking about Hebrews chapter 2 uh, in, in the, the context of the great salvation that we have. But it isn't just the word spoken through angels as was uh, in times past, whether it was very specific words and things. This is what's going to happen. You know, Lot received angels. Abraham received angels. Uh, Moses, uh, there was the angel of the Lord speaking with the Lord's voice through the, the uh, fiery or through the burning bush. Uh, and so, I mean, angels were utilized uh, throughout the Old Testament. But then when the New Testament came, what is it that the Hebrew writer says? God, who at various times and in various ways spoken times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. worlds. And then the fact that he had himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high became so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they and that same excellent name can be given uh, or is given to all those who are faithful to him and so it's just kind of a reminder of the need for us to make sure we give the more earnest heed to the things we've heard because the word of which all faithful people lived by and followed and paid earnest heed to under the old testament under the old law, the, the patriarchal law, now we have the word spoken directly by Jesus. And we have to give all the more earnest heed because this, is, this was God in the flesh. This was Emmanuel, God with us. And we have to pay attention to his words. And paying attention means that we're uh, focusing every day on doing what God wants us to do. Sometimes, whether it's minute by minute, hour by hour, that we are focused on no matter what's happening in the world around us, no matter how busy we may be or what all's going on, that in the end, uh, our service is to God. We are to fear God and keep his commandments. That is our job. That's our duty. And as a result, we can't afford to become distracted from that job. All right. That's the daily devotional for you today. Just under 10 minutes. Uh, I uh, hope everybody understands if it's, uh, again, a little bit short. Uh, today. Uh, but uh, we've got everything moved in the house now, almost everything. Uh, so we are actually, um, we're actually done. Now it's, now it's unpacking. <laughs> well, first it's recovering uh, from the back and, and, and foot and everything pain. And then, uh, then it's unpacking uh, everything as well. Oh, wait, fly. Uh, shoe fly. All right. Uh, so our next day of the deba devotional, Lord willing, will be on Monday at 630. Uh, and hope to see you all then. Thanks, everybody.